Yeah, that's right. No, no, no. So call the anime. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you love your research for advocates. Uh, yeah. what, what has been your research for uh, It's been difficult uh, because I do, I get a test on certain things and I'm, I do all this research. I think it's interesting to like, see the I'm like, for her cool outfit. Um, and then, uh, of course, like, it's, it's different buildings and cities and um, you know, uh, we can find to go in a different direction. Um, I mean, I know they all meet somewhere, but uh, it's not as bad as Lady Killer because Lady Killer was all about, for me, getting a period the period correct. Right, right. So I would be researching for like an hour of like, what type of clock she would have on the wall. Uh, this is appropriate for the period because she wouldn't have bought it in 1954. It would have been old, so she maybe bought it in the 50s. Sure. Yeah, like when you see cars from the 30s and 1950s shows. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. You have a friend. That, that actually reminds me of a compliment I want to pass along. Uh, my wife, I, my wife loves her and I showed her. She picked up the one, the middle cover, which is on the floor with all the all the uh, blood around her. And the first thing she said when she saw it was, "Oh man, she really got that dish from that." I know, right? That's a beautiful office. <laughs> um. So. Uh, Let's talk about Josie's origins real quick because I know that a variation of Josie first showed up in my uh, slideshow here. It was a series of art prints you made spoofing mid century advertising. Um, was this, I have a set of these actually. Did you, this was a school project, right? No. Well, no. I was way out of school. I dropped out of school. Right. Uh, no, it was, uh, I had to take Lady Taylor before this. Um, and they were like, well, let's, you know, we've got this other thing, then we'll let you call Lady Killer. Because I was going like, I don't know who the audience is for this, we don't know who would read this. Um, so work on this thing, build up your profile, and then we'll let you call Lady Killer. Well, I was trying to put this thing, and in the meantime, I was going crazy wanting to call Lady Killer. So these kind of came out as, the 90s, like, you get out of that system, and all the videos work that way through the slide, and figure out, what they were going to look like. And so we just kind of like, um, yeah, they don't make sense to so my wife actually, we have the prints of these, and my wife has them hanging in the kitchen, so I just see them whenever I. Can I be nervous? Yeah. My wife talked to me about True Trying Podcast, which is a little bit The uh, So you said you see, of course, Lady Killer's really her comments. I mean, the contradiction, the form is the joke away, the contradiction of the, the period style and the virus. And certainly, gallows humor. And fish art humor comes up in everything you do. What is your, what is your, what does that come from? That, that so dark humor? I mean, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of slasher movies. Uh, I love horror films. But uh, slasher movies, I, I never like unless there's like a little wink in an eye. Like, I feel like this. As dark as it goes, there should be some lightness in the humor. Or I like the counterbalance of, I mean, you know, the, you take a little bitterness with your sweet. And to me, that's funny. Like, you know, um, whistling on your way. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm born that way. <laughs> um, so I know uh, Dark Horse, you, will you, first of all, will you return to the world today? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm obsessed with it. I, I love it. And I would do it as soon as you read it. Um, just because it makes me laugh. It makes me giggle. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm working on writing it right now uh, on the third, uh, the third art. And it's like way more violent. The body can't let me play. Yeah. Um, yeah, everything you that she put in. Yeah. Dark Horse is putting together also, I've heard of it, that's a Lex. Hardcover compendium of the first two lady killers. Great, yeah. correct. Are you doing any new um, material for that? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm doing a cover for that. And I'm trying to teach myself how to visually paint. I think it's going okay. A little bit. Do you know what that's going to be? No clue. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Moving along. <laughs> uh, so, let's talk about a little bit of your early history. You told the story about, you know, you dropped out of art school, you quickly throw together a portfolio, 
to show artist David Beck. And that leads to your starting point. Uh, what was the moment when you knew that this was going to be a full blown career? No, I don't. I think I still call it in question. Uh, like, uh, I always have like a side hustle just in case things don't work out. Still sending bars somewhere? <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. No, I think uh, it, it was the day that I, I put in my notice and quit as a bartender. Um, you know, taking that leap and like, okay, I'm going to do this full time. It was really, really scary. Um, yeah, I think that was it. But that, that was, I can't remember how long ago that was. It was 2000, you know, seven or eight. Yeah, yeah, I think right. The other thing that always uh, blew my mind about your biography is that you just jumped like head first in. You you're, you do a four page story in The Great Day and it shows this dark horse and dollars and sexy chick. Mm -hmm. And then like the next thing you do is a 200 page draft novel. Yeah, well, Jamie Rich is called. Jamie's here today, if you'd like to direct your IRS. <laughs> oh, one point. Uh, <laughs> it's fair enough. It's fine. No, I. It was a great way to learn to jump in and do uh, a graphic novel. Um, you know, the deadlines aren't as tough. Um, and you get to really, I mean, working with Jamie was great, and I got to play with a bunch of styles. Because of the story that he was trying to tell, I got to try out all sorts of different ways of drawing it. And uh, it was learning on the job. You know, nobody can really teach you. You just have to just jump in and do it. Yeah, especially the same time, more or less. Yeah. Um, the, uh, so, a couple granular art questions. I have heard, reliably, that if you told me, <laughs> that you had your thumbprint in your artwork. Well, I used to, I haven't done it since, well, I didn't wait until it for sure. Um, I, I, I don't think I've done it when you were, I think this is the, my creator own stuff. Is it a good prize? No. I'm not going to do that first. Okay, great. And our question number two. Uh, so at the beginning of this, we, we showed the video of uh, you using the war brush to make the blood splat. And um, I just wanted to talk about that approach because I've noticed, of course, blood spatter, that chaotic blood spatter turns up in Helheim a lot, but it also shows up in a lot of your stuff. Like, and it's not just for blood spray. Sometimes it just is. That, that little chaos is added to the moment of what I would just describe as moral decay. Mm -hmm. uh, and what makes you decide when it's time to kind of like throw a little, a little mess on the, on the page? No, I think it's just one of those things where it might be a nervous hit <laughs> to throw a little blood spatter on or, or spray. But uh, I don't know, I, sometimes I just look at it and it doesn't feel finished until I mess it up a little bit. Well, you've, um, you know, I also want to talk about your work because I know that you, you know, routinely put in 12 to 16 hours a day, and mm -hmm. point, sometimes every day. Yeah. Uh, and I know that, I remember when we were in the studio together, you would just walk in the room, straight to your desk, and you had a pen on the page inside of you. Yeah. Uh, what, like, it was, and clearly I saw what you were doing. Uh, you weren't going to be getting social, you were actually just like trying to get the whole concept of procrastination eliminated from your life as fast as possible. And kill the suspense. Yeah. Um, what advice would you give to the young people who want to make a star about getting the work done? Yeah, I, I don't know. It's hard for me to give advice because I've made so many mistakes. Um, you know, and certainly working with some hours is definitely a mistake. Because, you know, when you do get time off the table too much or mismanage your time because you're used to going full force all the time, it's when you get a break, it's like, yeah. I'm going to sleep for four days. Um, you, go, you go straight from sympathetic to parents in sympathetic state. You just uh, yeah. go far like it's water to the <laughs> Yeah, I don't, uh, so it's not really healthy. But, you know, I think everybody finding that balance uh, is good and it's different for everyone. Um, but, you know, starting out, uh, the excuses are not drawing. I have a hard time with um, so, you know, you, you should be drawing every day. But it's just, uh, you know, starting out, even if you don't have a job to do, uh, you know, there's no way around it. You can't be a better artist, you can't get your work done, you can't do any of that if you're not strong. So, you draw. <laughs> you draw at this point for a number of writers, uh, from established comics pros to popular crime novels on one of the Um 
What lessons were you taking from each of those writers as you went along the way you were starting to build the script? I read, yeah, I learned a lot about storytelling from all the writers I've worked with and, you know, how it should be done, how it shouldn't be done, what works, what doesn't work. You know, I didn't, I didn't consciously realize that I was observing all of it while I was doing it. Um, but it definitely did soak in. And I think what had happened is I started, I came to this weird impact where I wasn't getting the kind of job that I wanted to get. Um, I was kind of stuck in this rut of the same type of um, genre. And I was getting kind of bored of it. Uh, and so I was like, well, screw it. Like, I, I'm going to write my own thing. I don't want to, but it's the only way I can draw what I want to draw. Uh, you know, and not wait for this job to come around. I'll make up my own job. Like Bendis has said a lot several times, that you write the things you want to read. Yeah, and that's, I mean that's what Bendis said a lot. So it was just a means and end of like well, I'm tired of going talking heads in a room. I want to I want to go crazy. I want to have fun and all the bloody things. And so I had to I had to write it. Well, that but that is interesting because there is a really clear dividing point in your career style, um, and it is you know in my opinion it's all I mean there is. You have this very simple, very charming style you're using in the young adult graphic novel, like Token. And then um, your drawing becomes darker and more representational and much more visually complex very suddenly with Elheim about four or five years ago. Um, what, was, what did it take to make that leap? Here, hardship. You know, I was bored. And when I was finally able to let loose and be like, I'm going to do some hyper masculine violence. Monster thing. Well, I'm not. I've not been given that opportunity before, so I was like, "Yeah, let's go. Let's, let's run with it. Let's go nuts." Uh, and and it felt a little bit more freeing to just like, "Yeah, heavy metal." <laughs> it is just like, yeah, it's like it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Um, and then how much? What's your digital versus pen and paper ratio? It depends on how behind I am. Uh, if I'm really behind, it's going to be all digital. Uh, if I'm ahead, it's going to be I uh, pencil it digitally, and then I print that in blue line, and then I ink it with a, a inking brush. Uh, I'm terrible with a pen. So, uh, it's my favorite way to discuss, right? So, we're having dinner, and you have somebody tell me that someone told you not long ago that you need to pen up an animal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, you're like, Argh! and you're like that. Yeah. <laughs> Please describe the, the, way, the, the way you describe the way you hold the pen and where each finger was when you're trying to make sure you get the right amount of pressure with the blow brush. How does that go? Alright. Describe each finger. Like, it's like you describe a brush, each is, a brush is different, so like, okay, so the pinky <laughs> rests on the face part. I didn't honestly come up with this. It's not a, a gimmick. Uh, and then the ring finger controls the tip, and then these kind of like spread all over the place. And I gracefully go across the page like that. No, I use the whole arm with it. But not like that. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you have this like very nice pen that you're holding in your hand. Yeah. 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 Um, you are also very, very good at, at, at choreographing action that flows smoothly across the page. Uh, obviously, I'm thinking of Lady Kill. I'm thinking of Catherine. I'm thinking of the Batman does a sword fight. Yeah. Was a real standout. Um, what, when you're planning these action uh, what are you drawing? I know you have actions actually for some trained fight choreographer. I do. do yeah. Uh, no, what I start with is basically like I either somebody writes it for me or I write like, what I want to happen in the fight. So like using way to oh, an example of like, I don't know, if fight is nice and if you're a savage person with chest and it's going to be brutal uh, or have a sound object that you want to strangle a guy with for years. Uh, and, you know, I'll have like little beats, like she needs to be over here for this thing. And so then um, my, my boyfriend is all about fight choreography, and so uh, I'll take it to him and I'll be like, okay, this is what I want to do with this sword, and it's going to go back like this, it's going to look super rad, and I'm like, you can't do that, that doesn't make any sense. Um, so you guys want like to be working out the blockade. You do, we bought Evan Pick Victory for my reference so that I remember like, how the fight's meant to go. Uh, so that, you know, I, I, and I think acting it out a little bit, I don't need voices or anything, it's just like it's physical stuff. But putting my body in that position uh, helps me remember what, right, right. and so then when I go to draw it, I'll remember what it was like. Well then, 
I know you also, you made the costume, right? You made the cabinet costume. Yeah. So you could understand better how the fabrics and stuff would move. Right? Yeah, and it's changed, like, since I did the, since I sewed the costume, uh, it's changed a little bit. Um, I do a little tweaks here and there um, to make it, make more sense. So look like spring Um, you joked that your mind got rocked by, and I quote, crappy night stuff. Like, like, yeah, crappy with you. I but, um, <laughs> you, I know exactly what you mean, right? The, the raw graffiti energy of some of that stuff. It was exciting. Like, yeah, you, like, you found a comic that had just been spray painted on a wall with the vibe that it had a lot of the time. That, yeah, that's that fast and that raw. And the artist was like superstar and it was so exciting and, you know, I was constantly at the comic and stuff. I was there for it. I love it. What was the, what were some of the ones that really were strong about that? Then? I mean, I, well, I love, I love to, it was about to be very engaged with um, I was, well, a huge X-Men fan, and, um, yeah, I lost the Crimson, I was in the You've been a big crafter at various points in your life. Mm -hmm. uh, when I met you years ago, you were constantly making me hilariously realistic made deceptive fake cakes yeah. that you would give people. Yeah. They were made out of what were they made out of again? Or so there's styrofoam and black wood there. And then you paint it. Okay, so with a heat paint or something. And the best thing about giving somebody a fake cake is they have to keep it in their house. Because everybody will already asked about it. Hey, what happened to that fake cake? Uh, <laughs> 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 what do you do with it? It's definitely a big people's lives complicated. Honey, it's Um, what were your, uh, yeah, yeah, have a bowl and have a big cake somewhere in their house right now. Um, what, what was your, um, what are your current crafting sessions? I'm trying to get you to talk about competitive tables. Oh, well, that's. That's to be done. I'm going to teach myself how to do competitive tablescaping. Can you please explain tablescaping to the audience? I think it's like a dinner party, but it's like a very serious competition. You're throwing a dinner party and you've got a theme, like, my theme is Aladdin, and then you like put a stand on the table and like some tea and things. It's probably over the top crazy. Well, there are fun tests for this. Yeah, but I'm waiting for retirement. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and you also like to do tiny things right now? If you are, I was just with the YouTube miniature videos where they make those little, it's not just the baking of the food. Like, I was looking at those little tiny bakeries. Yes, yes. You that you use like tweezers to make. <laughs> uh, as well as watching, I find it very relaxing. Very, yes, very relaxing. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, and then, obviously, as we talked about earlier, fashion and program design are playing a bigger and bigger role in your work. You did, of course, a product campaign and a handbag. Do you have any more people with the fashion industry down the line or hopes to do something? Yeah, I've had a really great work that they've asked me, uh, you know, off and on to, to throw stuff their way. And it, it, it's always, you know, it's slowly collaborating because they just want to see stuff I've got on hand. Right. So I don't have to create any new things. It's like, what do you, what do you get? I'm like, here you go, I don't know. Here's your bag. Yeah. yeah. And then they're like, you like it? That's right. Okay. Yeah. Um, what goes into making uh, a character special? You make seven of them now. Yeah. And uh, what do you have to give the people who are putting that together? Uh, it's getting easier to come along because, you know, in the beginning I was really worried about it. But, you know, the filters uh, are pretty talented. And, you know, it's just giving them enough angles to let them shine and do their job and make it sing. And, their ability to take these sketches I do and create a statue in my style. Right. It's a little more mind you know. So, you also went to art school in Portland, you know, and, and studied painting and approach your work. So, an art history background. Um, what What are your biggest visual influences outside of college? Uh, well, definitely the mid century style of painting. Right. Um, and then, like, you know, the full cover, the rubber painting. You love rubber, yeah. Uh, that's all I mean, that's all there. But anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, just all that stuff. And then, um, you know, of course, everybody was Musa, and I am including that. I've been Musa. Um, there's a Portuguese artist, Paul Rejo, that I love. Um, yeah, it's all over the place. And, you know, to this day, I'm still out there looking at more art, discovering more artists that, you know, that's the fun part of, about my 
my job is that I get to look at someone's art, and every time, you know, I look up from the drawing table and see what's out there, it, it makes me hungry to get better every time. And you love, uh, and she's passed away, uh, Sister Wendy Beck. You do. Does everybody know who Sister Wendy Beck is? Uh, did she? Did she's a cute little nun uh, with left teeth, and she had a show on well, India yeah. where she would talk about pain. And my favorite is when she talked about like these really like erotic paintings and this little nun going into great detail about like the history and the meaning of the <laughs> it's adorable. And she's not even there. No, no, I mean yeah, you can find her in the picture that I really quite yeah. extraordinary. Yeah. And she does a beautiful job explaining why the paintings are so powerful. But yeah. 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 Um speaking of them, yeah. I do uh know that uh you know you've got this large potential supporting cast you've just developed. And one of the interesting things is that you've got, you know, you, that you still can do more with. You've got Carlos and Linda at the store here. You've got Detective Saito and, and Nora. You've got Sister Maggie, and, and of course, the <coughs> Sister Maggie at some point, you know, becomes, in other stories, she becomes like a vigilante nun called Sister Zero. Uh, are there any? Hey, hey, hey. Oh. <laughs> um, so, uh, are there any, what kind of, I mean, what kind of thoughts are you having to, to develop this cast? Do you have some special plans for any of them? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm having fun. I'm definitely got, uh, since I say I want to go with that, you know, I am, I am having fun with the cast. I think it's really fun to do a cast with Selena and her sister. Um, because I think the sister's stories are really interesting and, and you know, the complicated relationship. Have and I don't know, maybe when you're responsible for putting your sister in a coma, there might be some people that you can put up. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and also, you know, give it any Yeah, I'll read that. And then later I'll pretend like I knew all along. <laughs> you heard it here first. The, um, you talked about enjoying popping from comic genre to genre because it helps you grow the most. And you have in your career very much by design. Are there any genres you haven't tried yet that you want? I don't know. I think I've tried almost everything. I can't think of one. No, I don't know. I don't know. Now I can start looking. Um, you have an unholy love of all things TV. Yeah. Uh, do you have any uh, special TV experiences that you, any TV recommendations you'd like to share uh, that you could be very nice to? Share?